One of the most common examples of a simple harmonic oscillator is a mass attached to a spring, which is assumed to be massless, with no damping or energy loss mechanism. Like all simple harmonic oscillators, this thing can be described as a function of time with its position being described as a sine or cosine function. The task is to use the information given about the problem to detain the other physical quantities. This is the angular frequency, the amplitude, the maximum velocity, total energy, etc. And of course, for us to actually prove that the mass on a spring is a harmonic oscillator. So in this problem below, I have a mass right here. There is some position in which the mass is unstretched. This is the equilibrium position, x equals zero. And then we've stretched it some distance x. The spring has a spring constant k, the mass, a mass of m. The results that we're going to find out for this problem is that the angular frequency is the spring constant divided by the mass and the square root of that. The period is 2 pi over omega, so it's 2 pi times the square root of the mass over the spring constant. Now one of the neat things about this, this says that for a given mass and a given spring constant, it will vibrate with a particular period. And that period in no way depends on the amplitude of the vibration. Whether you pull the spring very far out and let it go, or you just pull it a little bit and let it go, it will take exactly the same amount of time to make one path back and forth. The frequency is 1 over the period, so it's 1 over 2 pi times the square root of the spring constant over the mass. The maximum displacement, well this is always the amplitude. The maximum velocity will show is the amplitude times the angular frequency, so it depends on the amplitude, the spring constant, and the mass. The maximum acceleration we're going to show is equal to the amplitude times omega squared. And the energy of the system we're going to show can be written a couple of different ways. One of them that's highly useful is one half the spring constant times the amplitude squared. But another way that's often useful is one half the mass times v max squared, and that's a squared omega squared. So all of this is constant. Those are the results. So we've got them put there in a nice place and now all we got to do is prove that those are the results for a problem. So first thing is let's prove that this thing is a harmonic oscillator. To do that we need to find the acceleration and show that it fits the formula of a harmonic oscillator. So I have the mass, I've got a normal, I have weight, I have a spring, and there's my coordinate system. The sum of the forces in x is equal to mass times acceleration in x. The forces in x is minus the spring force. But we know by Hooke's law, this is minus kx. Rearranging that equation, this is minus k over m times x. So far, all we've done is Newton. But ax equal minus omega squared x if a simple harmonic oscillator. Well if we look at this equation required for a harmonic oscillator and we look at that equation above we see that they would be exactly the same if k over m was omega squared. Therefore It is an SHO with omega squared equal k over m. So our first equation is relatively simple to pick up. 
and then omega is the square root of k over m because it's just the square root of omega squared. Omega times the period is equal to 2 pi. This is from trig. This is the condition that all trigonometric functions, sines and cosines, repeat every 2 pi. Putting in our work above, we have that the period is 2 pi over omega. So that's 2 pi over the square root of k over m, which is 2 pi the square root of m over k. That gets our second formula. The frequency, by definition, is 1 over the period. So that's 1 over 2 pi times the square root of k over m, which, by the way, is the same thing as omega over 2 pi. So we have that equation. So our original equations about the period, the frequency, and omega all come from just solving Newton's laws for this particular situation. Now what's important, some of these equations, like this equation, are universally true for all problems. Equations like this and this equation are true for all problems. But these specific solutions, this one, just for the spring mass. It's not true for pendulum or any other type of problem. Same thing here. This equation is just for the spring mass. So while we have basic relations from trig, when we apply the stuff that we get out of Newton's second law, they're unique to the situation that we analyzed. What were the forces involved? What was the mass involved? Some other thing that's important to note. Energy is conserved in our problem. And that's because we said that we were not going to allow there to be any drag or things that take energy out of the system. So we have that E is equal to K plus U is constant. So let's take some cases. If you stretch the spring out, where x equals a. At that point, v is equal to zero. This is when you get the maximum stretch of the spring. Now at that point, when you have the amplitude, there's no speed. This is called a classical turning point. The spring is pulled out, it's turning and getting ready, and the mass is going to start moving back. At that point, k is zero. u is equal to 1 half k times a squared because x equals a. Therefore, e is equal to k, but that's 0, plus 1 half k a squared. So if you know the amplitude and you know the spring constant, you know the total energy of the system. And because it's constant, this is always true. At equilibrium, position, x is equal to zero. So in this case, We have a spring. For instance, the block might be moving with some speed, and we know that x is zero. 
Now at this case, this is going to be where the maximum speed is going to be found. E is equal to one half mv max squared plus one half k zero squared. So it has no potential energy, only kinetic. Now there's a couple of things that we could do with this. So let's try some of them. But E is one half K A squared and that has to equal one half M V max squared. Let me kill the halves. V max squared is equal to K over M a squared. But this is omega squared. So that's omega a squared. Therefore, V max is equal to omega times a. Let's take one other thing while we're looking at this. A max occurs when we have at least in terms of magnitude when we have maximum displacement. Remind you of where we found that and that was we found that by looking at our equation. So AX is equal to minus omega squared times the max, but the maximum is A. So therefore the maximum is equal to omega squared A. So you can see that everything that we need to know about our harmonic oscillator can be found from finding Newton's laws. All right, we'll look at another system in the next video.